The Tales of Past Time by Charles Perrault The Fairies There was once a widow who had two daughters. The elder was so like her mother in temper and face that to have seen the one was to have seen the other. They were both so disagreeable and proud that it was impossible to live with them. The younger, who was the exact portrait of her father in her kindly and polite ways, was also as beautiful a girl as one could see. As we are naturally fond of those who resemble us, the mother doted on her elder daughter. While was the younger, she had a most violent aversion and made her take her meals in the kitchen and work hard all day among other things that she was obliged to do. This poor child was forced to go twice a day to fetch water from a place a mile or more from the house and carry back a large jug filled to the brim. As she was standing one day by the spring, a poor woman came up to her and asked the girl to give her some water to drink. Certainly, my good woman, she replied, and the beautiful girl at once stooped and rinsed up, rinsed out the jug, and then, filling it with water from the clearest part of the spring, she held it up to the woman, continuing to support the jug that she might drink with greater comfort. Having drunk, the woman said to her, you are so beautiful, so good and kind, and that I cannot refrain from conferring a gift upon you. For she was a really a fairy who had taken the form of a poor village woman in order to see how far the girl's kind-heartedness would go. This gift I make you, continued the fairy, that with every word you speak, either a flower or a precious stone will fall from your mouth. The girl had no sooner reached home than her mother began scolding her for being back so late. I'm sorry, mother, said she, to have been out so long. And as she spoke, there fell from her mouth two roses, two pearls and two large diamonds. The mother gazed at her in astonishment. What do I see? She exclaimed. Pearls and diamonds seem to be dropping from her mouth. How is this, my daughter? It was the first time she called, she had called her daughter. The poor child related in all simplicity what had happened, letting fall quantities of diamonds in the course of her narrative. I must certainly send my other daughter there said the mother. Look, Fanchon, see what falls from your sister's mouth when she speaks? Would you not be glad to receive a similar gift? All you have to do is to go and fetch water from the spring. And if an old woman asks you for some to drink, to give it to her nicely and politely. I should like to see myself going to the spring, answered the rude cross girl. I insist on your going, rejoined the mother, and that at once. The elder girl went off, still grumbling. With her, she took the handsomest silver bottle she could find in the house. She had no sooner arrived at the spring than she saw a lady magnificently dressed walking towards her from the wood who approached and asked for some water to drink. It was the same fairy who had appeared to the sister, but she had now put on the airs and apparel of a princess, as she wished to see how far this girl's rudeness would go. Do you think I came here just to draw water for you? answered the arrogant and unmannerly girl. I have, of course, brought this silver bottle on purpose for Madame to drink from. Well, all I have to say is, drink from it if you like. You are scarcely polite, said the fairy without losing her temper. However, as you are so disobliging, I confer this gift upon you. 
that with every word you speak, a snake or a toad shall fall from your mouth. Directly her mother caught, uh, caught sight of her. She called out, Well, my daughter, well, my mother, replied the, the ill-tempered girl, throwing out as she spoke two vipers and two toads. Alack! crying the mother. What do I see? This is her sister's doing, but I will pay her out for it. And so saying, she ran towards the younger, younger girl with intent to beat her. The unhappy girl fled from the house and went and hid herself in the neighboring forest. The king's son, who was returning from hunting, met her and seeing how beautiful she was, asked her what she was doing there all alone and why she was crying. Alas, sir, my mother has driven me from home. The king's son, seeing five or six pearls and as many diamonds falling from her mouth as she spoke, asked her to explain how this was and she told him all her tale. The king's son fell in love with her and thinking that such a gift as she possessed was worth more than any ordinary dower brought by another. He carried her off to his father's palace and there married her. Of higher worth are gently words than diamonds or gold and even over the minds of men a great power they hold. It costs some pains to be polite and needs some kindly thought, but soon or late, as here you see, reward will come unsought.